Okay, now we're ready to start putting the items together for our demonstration. It's important to make your work flow quickly and smoothly when you're doing a demonstration and also keep your work area neat and organized. Now, if you look at my table today, you'll see over here on this tray, I have all the ingredients that I'm going to need. I've simply organized them on a cookie tray so I can easily bring them into the room and bring them to the table. Now, I've got my bread in a Ziploc bag so that it stays nice and fresh. But before I even start, I'm going to go ahead and open this bag up and open that so it's easy to get my bread out. I've pre-measured my peanut butter and my jelly. I'm going to take the lids off those containers because when I'm doing my demonstration, I don't want to be nervous and fumble with the container lids. I've got a knife for my sandwich. I've got some spreading knives. I've got my plate. I have a hand towel in case I have an accident and need to make a, a clean up a spill. I also have bacterial wipes so I can clean my hands before I start. That's all a good part of a food demonstration preparation. Now I don't want to start out with this right in front so everybody can see what I have, so I'm going to put this on the table behind me. If I would have many, many steps to my demonstration, I might have a separate tray for each step, and then I could simply bring the tray forward when I needed it and removed it when I didn't. This keeps your work area much cleaner and neater. Now when you're trying to demonstrate, sometimes when something's flat on the table, it's more difficult for your audience to see. I have a simple, inexpensive plastic picture frame. You can see it's kind of on an angle. I'm going to put the wide side towards the back of the table, and I'm going to put my cutting board on top of this, because this is going to be my work surface. This elevates it just a little bit so my entire audience can see what I'm doing easier. You don't always have to do that, it's just something that I find helpful to do. So now I've got everything set up. I have a table clock on, I have my stuff in place, I've got my tray organized, so it's going to be ready to start. I'm going to step off to the side of the camera and step right back in and start my demonstration just like you would do if you were doing it for an audience. So stay right there, I'll be back in a second. <clears throat> Any time is a good time for PB&J. Did you know that the average American young man eats 1,500 peanut butter sandwiches by the time he's 18? And that each American consumes about 24 pounds of peanut butter a year? That's a lot of peanut butter. It just shows that any time of day, you'll find someone eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Hi, my name is Jody Bestorn from the Clover 4-H Club and I'm here today to tell you about my favorite snack, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. There are some ingredients that you will need. You will, of course, need bread, jelly, and peanut butter. Let's get started. Today for my bread, I'm going to be using a nine grain bread. It has whole wheat flour, cornmeal, cracked oats, cracked wheat, and sunflower seeds. This adds nutritional value to that. You could use other kinds of bread products if you like. You could use tortillas, English muffins, any kind of bread that you might happen to have at home. For my spread today, I'm going to use smooth peanut butter. An average serving is about two tablespoons. I have pre-measured that and that way I know I get the exact recommended daily serving. Peanut butter is part of the protein group in the Food Guide Pyramid. We need between two and three three ounce servings of protein each and every day. So using peanut butter is a good way to get that. If you're allergic to peanut butter, there are other alternatives out there such as soy nut spread that react very similarly and you can use them in place of peanut butter. Of course, you can use crunchy if you prefer. Next, you need some sort of jelly or jam. Today, I'm using raspberry, and I have pre-measured two tablespoons, but I may only use one tablespoon. It kind of depends how it all goes on. You want to make sure and get it all the way out to the corners. And I think for today, maybe the one tablespoon will be enough. 
going to place the lid on my sandwich. And with this kind of bread, I kind of like to cut it into peanut butter sticks. So I'm going to cut these in one inch wide finger sticks so that they're easier to eat and then I can share them with more of my friends. I'm going to arrange them on the platter so everybody can get one, like so. And I might even top it off with an apple on the side. So there you have it, a quick sandwich that you can have for a snack or share with your family or friends. As you think about a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, remember that they can be easy to make. It takes very little ingredients, most of which you, you normally would have on hand at home. It's nutritious. You get nutrients from the grain group as well as the protein group. And they're lots of fun because you can use different kinds of breads, cut them into different shapes, and use different kinds of jellies to make it a really great snack any time of day. Are there any questions? Yes, ma'am. I don't like jelly. Could I use something else? Sure, there's lots of different things you can do. You know, you might like preserves. You, if you want something sweet, you might try honey. Some people even like to put some fruit in between their peanut butter sandwich. So anything like that would be another way to make it personal and make it your own. So there's lots of different ways that you can substitute ingredients if you don't care for something here. And another question, yes. I have to make my sandwiches early in the morning. Would this keep by the time I had to eat it for an afternoon snack? That's an excellent question about being able to make your sandwich earlier in the day and use it later in the afternoon. That is a good question because peanut butter is very non-perishable. I would recommend that you keep it in a cool place, but it doesn't have to be frozen or kept on ice. But simply in a cool place like maybe an insulated lunch bag would be just fine because peanut butter does not spoil and it usually doesn't get soggy either. Well, I want to thank you for being listening to my demonstration today, and I hope you enjoy and find time to make a PB&J today.